What's going on, everybody? Hopefully, we're live and everything should be going smoothly. Today, we're back for another STL Sunday. I'm going to... Sorry, looks like my audio was a little hot. Okay. We'll uh, try that. STL Sunday. Purpose of these videos are to pick a project, go through the modeling process that I do to come up with the, the design. I'm gonna be using Fusion 360. I'm gonna try and walk you through as many of the steps and controls that I use, but it's not a, a complete how-to. It's just kind of showing how I take a item that I wanna model and break it down into steps or something simple. So hopefully we are uh, looking okay. Well, we'll get Everybody rolling in here, make sure everything is good. Yes, I shaved. It's uh, no more mustache, no beard currently, you know, just a fresh start. But I also, we've got Fusion 360 running here. Now, a couple of other things that I had, I've changed for this week is that I've changed, I'm running a, a multi-monitor setup now, so I can more easily show you guys everything on the screen. For some reason, before, it wouldn't show you the this tree on the side or some of the other prompts that would come up. I fixed that. Hopefully now you'll be able to see everything much easier. I have uh, adjusted the volume down, so hopefully we're, we're all a little bit more squared away. Thanks everyone for joining in. Yes, all the comments. Yeah, how do I look 12 now, right? I don't often not have facial hair, so. <laughs> She didn't attack me. This was what I, I told her I was going to leave it for a week. I did that, but now we're here. Today, our projects, we're going to do two projects, hopefully, if we have time, which I think we should easily have time. Um, I picked, uh, what did I choose for this one? I think we are going to do an air compressor, like a, you know, a, a roll around style air compressor that you would have in a shop. And then I'm also going to do a trash can just because Friday feeds. Um, hopefully, hopefully sounds coming back. I, I've adjusted everything down, so it shouldn't be as loud, but you guys will have to let me know to make sure that that, that works. So again, Fusion 360, we're going to blank slate here. We are going to find ourselves a, let's find a, uh, an air compressor to use. I think I wanted to go, I chose one for like the thumbnail and I kind of want to do that style. Let's see. Something. We're just kind of going, I want like the, uh, kind of like this style this craftsman one here. We'll just, we'll just choose. This is, you know, kind of along the lines of what I would do if I was trying to choose something to, actually, let's go, let's go uh, Harbor Freight air compressor. <laughs> That's the one I chose. That's what it was. So, I think that is going to be the model that we're gonna go. Fix your audio. All right. Well, let's see. I don't know. I'm going to drop that there. Now, hopefully, it's not, not as bad. We've turned the, the mic gain down. It shows that it's not peaking in, in the system, but... I turned it down in the actual controller. We'll go from there. So this is the type of air compressor we're going to go with. So we'll start with the basics here. I'm going to do a, a cylinder for this. Okay. I'm gonna let this catch up one more time. Better, okay, that sounds better. If we set it up too high in the controller, that'll work. So here we are. This is the air compressor we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with a 
pretty simple cylinder. Now this does have these domed ends. So we're gonna do, rather than just doing a, an extrude on a cylinder, let's start with the sketch, start on the side. L for line, X for construction. Now, one thing that we do need to, or we should look at is what, si well, what size we wanna make this thing. Let's just say we wanna make that, the compressor portion like 60 millimeters long. It's decent sized. So gonna use D to dimension this. hitting control and selecting the, the lines to center everything. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to, using L for line, selecting that line again, hitting X, that'll make it a non-construction line. But the reason that we're gonna go this way rather than drawing a circle is because we're gonna go three point arc. We're gonna use a revolve function rather than a extruding a, a cylinder. So we're going to alpha line X for construction. Um, what I'm doing here is I just want to make want to make some of these things look appropriate and then I'm going to we're gonna mirror that, that side to the other just to make sure everything's the same. But I'll look at, so you can see it doesn't have a ton of, oh, you, can, you can't see because it's covered by me. Um, it doesn't have a ton of dome to that side. So like I've got a lot more here than would be needed. It's gonna be something like that. We'll throw a dimension on there. Hitting D for dimension, clicking on the point and then that line, two millimeters, is that's a good number. Oh, wow, is this Josh's little brother? That's funny. My bro I think my brother currently has a beard as well, so. <laughs> um, looks like the wife won the, the razor battle. She kind of did. I kind of caved in. So basically we've created this here. Now what I haven't done is, for some, why is this actually, trying to actually figure out why this is locked me into a certain height. Good. So we have to figure out what we want the overall diameter of this to be. And I think about an inch is fine. So 25 millimeters, and we'll go 12.5 for the radius. After we've created this, we're gonna finish this sketch. Then we go this revolve function up here. So the profile, I'm gonna select, well, let me, let's, I might actually have to uh, close this sketch. I'll try that. I don't use the revolve function in Fusion very often, but now we've got the profile. Then I selected the center line and that's what will give us that so now we have something that looks somewhat like that cylinder. We can go back. I feel like it needs a little bit more doming to it. Not too bad. So we got that. We can put a little bit of a radius on the end to kind of make it look like it flows into it even a little bit better. We can add some details there, but we'll get to that. We're gonna make this again designed around the ability to 3D print it. So 
I'm going to make some concessions on not modeling this exactly just so that in the end, I think that it looks most appropriate for 3D printing. So let's work on, let's work on the feet and the wheels for now. So we have these planes in here. Now we know we made this 60 millimeters. This is at the midpoint. So I'm 30 from the end. I'm going to go up to this construct and offset the plane. And then I don't want to go all the way to the end at 30. So let's go to 25. And then we're going to create a, we're going to create a sketch on that plane. And this is going to be for those, those front legs. So taking a look one more time at the photo, they just kind of come off pretty close to the bottom. Let's just make it right at the bottom just to make everything more simple. Just make a general sketch. Let's close that. Hit P for project. That way we can get that outside. I'm going to make those, make that bottom particular. Now, one thing that we want to do is figure out, maybe we'll come back and figure that part out, but we want to figure out how tall our actual wheel is going to be. And if we want to use something as a wheel, like if you wanted to use a, a bearing, we could do that, but we'll probably just, you know, say that we're going to 3d print that as well. The wheels, not the, not a bearing, but let's make our, actually let's create a line that goes down. Let's keep this all kind of within the constraints of the outside. Not totally needed or important, but give it a th mm, give it a four millimeter foot to it. Now these lines here, these little hash marks, those are actually parallel constraints. That means that this drawing is is you know certain lines are parallel to each other, and if you move one, it's going to move both. Those are called constraints. And they're super important to drawing. It's you can it makes your life so much easier if you're using constraints and you know constraining your drawings well so that as you make adjustments, it adjusts other things for you. If you get in the habit of doing that early in your drawing, things will just be so much more smooth. So let's make the overall height of this leg. Um, six point five keeps it pretty much in check there. We want to define this angle a little bit. 120, I don't like it. Go, uh, I don't like that either. Let's go back. What did we have before? We're not going to do the angle. We're going to do a dimension. Um, 0.875. So I'm, I'm happy enough with the, the look of that foot. So let's do, rather than this one side over here, we'll do symmetric. That way we can two millimeter, that'll give us a four millimeter wide foot. That's what we used for the width. So it'd give us a, a square pad on the bottom. So simple there. Now, obviously we can mirror that. We're gonna do that but we're gonna work on the other side first. So for this one, let's do it differently. Let's go, let's create a sketch on the, the right side plane. And we're going to, let's use a rectangle just to make things easy. And we're gonna create a, line across the bottom as a construction line. That way we can snap things to it. Well, it didn't snap very well to it. We know that we did this 12.5 from the origin though, because we made it 24 what, 25 millimeter uh, diameter. 
So that will do. Twenty four millimeters from there. And then this stuff. Let's go. Uh, so we we selected a dimension for this bottom line. Now we'll just hold control with that one selected, select the other side, and then go up to the top and hit equal. Another constraint thing. So if we wanted to, you know, maybe we thought six millimeters wasn't enough, we can change this to eight and it changes both of them. So simple to do it that way. We'll just leave it at eight, it's fine. L for line, X for construction again. We're gonna create a midpoint line. That way I can hit C for circle. And we can snap to that midpoint. The reason I did that is I want to make this a hole so that we can attach our wheels to it. We'll say that this is going to be 2.5 millimeters. If you do 2.5 millimeter, then you can actually thread a three millimeter screw into 3D printed plastic pretty easily. So how long bearded militia asked, how long does it take to learn Fusion 360? So actually Fusion 360 is not my preference. I, I'm not all that familiar with this program, but I've been drawing in other CAD programs for so long that most, most things are similar. So it kind of just lends you down that path. There's a lot of things with fusion that I kind of just stumble my way through and, and make it, make it happen. Um, but it's not necessarily my, my, uh, desired drafting program, but since it's free, it seems like it's the best option for me to do these type of videos with because it's just, uh, it's, it's so much easier to recommend to people for a free one. So we're taking that profile we did and we're extruding it out. Now it goes to cut first, you know, initially, but we're going to go join that way. It creates material instead of takes it away. Now we're going to take this. We want to make sure that it goes just past the, the body. So 12 millimeters looks good. Now, we did that. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw a wheel on the outside. So we're going to select that. We're going to hit the sketch first. Then we're going to select that face that we just drew. And now we're going to do a circle. I'm going to hit L for line. We're going to snap off this point down here doesn't want to snap very well. We're going to select that corner there again, hold control, select the end of that one, and then use this button up here, which is the co coinc coincident coincident thing, so that we can make sure that when we draw our wheel, that it sits so that this actually sits level. So did that now with this bottom line selected and that we can hit the tangent and now we have a wheel of the proper diameter. We'll draw a through hole, draw a circle, then we'll hit D for dimension, 3.2 millimeters so that the three millimeter screw goes straight through it and then it will tap into the back side there. So it wants to go the other way initially. We're gonna drag it out. Let's go four millimeters. Then we need to go over here and instead of join or cut, we don't want it, I don't want it to be the same piece. So we're actually gonna say new body. That way it's actually a separate component. We can do things to it differently, but it knows that it's a separate piece so that we actually keep things, keep things separate. So, you know, little things there. Now, if we want, let's click and put a radius edge on the, on that tire and just do one millimeter. So, oops. So you can see like, well, maybe that's a little close. Maybe this thing also is that area is a little bit large. There's little things that we could do like down here at the bottom, this, this tree, you see this, this area down here in the bottom left corner, that's the design history. If we rotate that or drag that back, it'll actually go back through the steps that we, we drew. So 
let's go back to this one. And we had eight millimeters. Let's change that back to six. Then we can drag it forward. And now we've got it resized everything. Since we made all these little things, we, we went through and added all of those features to make sure that things were snapping to the correct points and it made sure that everything changes with itself. That way you can make those modifications and things just fix themselves. So now if you want to, you can hit this inspect tool up here and then click on something like that radius and that tells us that the radius of this is 4.9 millimeters. Oh, that's a little bit off your screen there. Um, 4.9 millimeters. So the outside diameter of this wheel is about 10 millimeters, which is it's reasonable, maybe a little small though. So, you know, let's, let's say we want to adjust. I don't, I don't love that size. That does seem too small. So one thing I did is I just said that this axle location was at the bottom. Let's just bring it up a little bit. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 10 millimeters. That just raises everything up. Now, see that, how that made the wheel and everything bigger but we do need to bring that a little bit further out so things clear. 13.5, there. It's not terrible. Thanks again, everyone for, yes, tech, the, the axle center line should be below the tank if we were like trying to model this. I'm trying to make it so that this is easier to 3D print. So to make this, you know, if you print it all below, it's just, this is 3D printing. It's for little stuff like this. Again, like yeah, if you're if you're trying to make it for all the all the purposes of of reality, yes, there's absolutely things like that you should do. I'm just trying to make this thing simple. If we were actually trying to make a a realistic version of this, yes, that would be below smaller tires. Um, I, you know. Really small items can be more difficult to print. The larger ones, maybe you'll end up with a little bit better looking print. That's that's all we're doing. So now, since we've done that, we are going to go up on the create side in the drop down, and we'll hit mirror, and then we're going to hit mirror. Well, features is is what we actually want. So then we can select on the things we want for the other side. That front foot the rear axle boss and that tire well and those and the uh, fillet we put on the end and then the mirror plane is going to be the yz plane kind of like that that mid plane that we had and in between hit okay and now we've got everything on both sides let's see um, the screen toggling skills are already much improved. Yes, I've changed a lot. We've got, a, uh, I've got macro keys over here now, so we can, we can select between what you guys are seeing. I'm trying not to double up on keys that I'm using for more than one purpose. <laughs> so, all right, there's our, uh, our base, our tires are separate. You can see here, you see how all these lines you're seeing on the back side. We can change how these things look in display settings, visual style, shade with visible edges only. I usually prefer that one personally. So, about like that. So, now let's work on the top portion of this air compressor. I'm uh, just taking a look and figure out how we want to start. We'll start with this uh, with this shroud. I'm looking at kind of where it is in relation to the the midpoint, and I'm gonna start at the midpoint for just for now, just to kind of look at this. So this is pretty much just a a square with rounded corners, kind of just looking at it and trying breaking it down. So we're gonna create a sketch. We're gonna use that that plane. Grab the rectangle tool. Now I'm gonna hit control and select 
these two edges and hit equal so that it makes a square. I'm going to hit L for line, X to change it to construction, select the origin down there, and then go to the midpoint of one of those lines. Then we're going to, I'm going to select that line again and hit this vertical constraint up top. That way it keeps it properly on the center line. Now I'm going to keep this, this top compressor portion as a separate piece. And I'm going to do that so you could print it out of a different color filament or so that it's easier to 3D print when it's on its own. We'll make it so that it's easily attachable. And just in general, we're trying to make this more simple to construct, maybe cooler looking when you're done. If you want to do the colored tank and black top, whatever you like. Let's see. So we have that. We can, we can either radius the edges here or we can do it after it's a solid, doesn't really matter. We're going to select all the corners first. Then we're going to adjust it. One millimeter radius looks good. We're going to make, we're going to hit extrude on that after we're done. Now we haven't defined the size. I'm just kind of I just kind of winged something together. Um, let's make it, make it a little bit bigger, but I think size lengthwise, we're going to leave it at that 16 millimeters. New body is selected over here. So it, it stays separate, but we're going to go back to that, that sketch. And we're going to grab hit D for dimension. It was 13. So let's, or 11.3. So let's just go at 13. Now it should have, I think it might've lost our constraint before, but so. When we put the radius on there, I think it, it lost some of those relations, but there. So that looks reasonable enough. Now let's add this, this top portion to it, which is just a, smaller area. L for line, X for construction. Let's, uh, I'm just dragging this off so I can more easily hit the, uh, that constraint. Sometimes they're harder to get those to click. Do 10 by, hmm, I'll go to four. So drag that out to negative 12 is fine. Now that had kind of a chamfer on the front. So we're going to click that and hit four to drag it back. Well, let's see, we're going to put that radius on that first, and then we'll radius these two edges. So, Trash is coming later in, in can form. Yes, we're going to do a little trash can after this. A fun scale desk toy. Um, now we, we probably want to add this compressor detail on the back, right? That, but again, we want to try and keep this 3D printable. How crazy do we want to get? Let's, uh, let's create the base. Well, I'm going to put a small radius on the nose of this first. 
one thing we need to do is make sure that you can actually attach this to the uh, cylinder area. So we're going to go in just create an area rectangle we're going to call that we're just going to call it 10 millimeters and then we're going to I'm going to select this line in the bottom of the the pump area with while holding control and then we're going to hit the Coincident. Oh, it didn't hold both of them. Sometimes fusion's funny with these constraints. We'll do collinear. There we go. That grabbed it. Just make sure that it always has enough here. Now, one thing when we extrude this, it'll do a cut. We're going to do a join. Uh, I don't. We're going to do start. We're going to do offset because right here, you see how it starts kind of a four where we want. I'm going to offset that negative three millimeters. So it kind of hides it underneath of it. Now we'll go to negative two. And then the length. Well, we'll make enough room so that we can make sure we definitely have. We can go back and adjust this, but. 23. Now, join, but I don't, I want to make sure that it doesn't join all the bodies. Well, let's just do, uh, I think I can combine these. I'm going to do a new body for this one right now. And then I think we can combine those two bodies. If I'm not mistaken, we shall see. Well, we'll go back to that. Um, looking at the comments a little bit. Um, oh, hold on. Sorry, my comments froze. My The chat froze. I'm restarting that. Apologize for that. There we go. Oh, wait, way better. Sorry. Josh, I ran a sort of servo tape. Can I borrow some? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know what the SCX10 in the SCX10 means in the axial? I don't know what you mean, Ryan. So. All right. Oh, here's the uh, combined feature up here in the top. So now we can select those two bodies, make sure that those are joined. Combine now. Okay, there we go. So now we just need to do the other portion. So this has got obviously this this uh, the black area on this is just a shroud over the the actual metal pump that's behind it, and we're you know, suspending reality a little bit. And we're just going to kind of create the back portion of the compressor to, to hang out there. I think we all kind of get the, the reasoning why we're not going crazy with that. It's absolutely something we could do, but let's, let's try and keep this high level. This is mainly again, just to, to show how we can take something and break it down. So, we're going to hit a rectangle. I'm actually going to, let's do this. Let's make this kind of a construction line. Now I'm connecting the midpoints. That way I can. Now I didn't make that that uh, square an actual profile that we're going to use because these things kind of have like 
a little bit of a curve to the to the sides of them. So we're going to replicate that a little bit. We're going to go with an arc, three point arc. We're going to select those two top and bottom corners. And we're going to do that on all four sides. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna select all four of those arcs we just created. I'm gonna go back over on the right and click construction again to make them actual. And while they're still selected, we're gonna hit equal. So now if we adjust one of them, all of them change together. Fun, right? Let's pull it to about where we want. Then we're gonna hit D for dimension. And 12 millimeter radius on it. We actually need to still define where this should be as far as size go, size goes. Um, let's make this 10 millimeters. So oh, we need to. Okay, we're gonna bring that size back down a little bit. We'll go nine. So, straighten the back out. I'm kind of creating this this rear portion here. What's coming out of the back side? Right. Whoops. Sorry. Switch drawings on that one by accident. Negative five millimeters for now. Now it does have like another little section on the back and we're going to, we're going to say that that's like a, just a square section. I'm not, if I was trying to get, crazy about this, I'd go find like a better reference photo of the back. There's probably one on the website that I grabbed this from initially, but we're trying to trying not to get too far into the weeds here, being that this is live. So this is just to keep things in the center. Using these for construction lines. Just clicking on them and then hitting X. That just changes them from a regular line to a construction line, back and forth. Seven millimeters. Select one of the two legs, hit equal. Bring it out three millimeters. Let's put some radius points on this thing. Simplify it up a little bit. One there. We can select the whole face and then drag down, make it a one. Okay. Now we need to put the actual cylinder, the pump cylinder on the top of it. So it's got kind of a finned area and a head. Now those fins, a little bit, little bit difficult to, to 3D print those properly. So 
um, unless we simplify it down quite a bit. So let's let's do that. We're going to select that that face and one more time. Look at that. So it needs a, a flat cylinder head on it with some flat sides, and then it's going to cone down as the cylinder goes towards the base. We're going to consider that it goes pretty close to the top. And we're going to take this down and I'm just going to collide it into that portion that we've already done a little bit. Okay. Just trying to find some points to constrain the drawing to just so that we can make this look how we want. Three millimeters at the top and 2.25 at the bottom. These are all just rough. Two millimeter head on it and seven millimeters there. Let's make sure that we don't go all the way to the top and give it a half a millimeter of clearance. I'm going to mirror this line to the other side. Okay. And then we need to make sure we close that profile with a, another line. Now we still haven't added the fins, which I think we should, we should do first. Let's take and Um, let's go with a, make sure that we're going to a fairly reasonable thickness to go with 0.8 millimeters. That gives us a number of layers of, that either gives us four layers at 0.2 millimeters of thickness if we're printing upward, or if we're printing it laying flat, the 0.4 millimeter nozzle will be able to make at least two lines. It's not, it's not a ton. I would probably want to make sure that we print this vertically. Um, now let's, we can do this a couple of ways. We're going to create rectangular pattern. We're going to select those outside lines and then we're going to, let's, we're only going to go, oh, whoops, wrong one. Just going to grab three. negative three millimeter oops negative three so that gives us a few oh it mirrored it in two different ways my bad do this one more time rectangular pattern select these Negative three, three times. Okay. I'm going to create one more line. Do this. We're going to make sure that it's, it's parallel with that other one. It already did that. We're going to just dimension it off of that other one. by uh, 0.8 again is fine. Let's, we're gonna select all of those lines we just drew. Hit the mirror command, take it to the other side. Now we created those and that, that per that parallel line to it, just so that we could kind of make this a reasonable 
It's got a little bit of fin design to it, but it's still 3D printable enough. It's going to be a join. I'm going to go out. We're going to go out four millimeters for now. We're going to add the fins on the back side as well. Mm, we didn't give it enough there. Uh, so we only got two fins out of it this way. I didn't notice how far down I was I was colliding that. We can actually go back and change this all if we want. But let's use let's use this for now. So to clean this up. We can draw some rectangles. Actually, I'm going to undo that. We're not going to draw that that sketch yet. And we're going to make one change on that on that feature we just did. This is something that's super handy in a lot of ways. We did a join. I'm going to do a new body. Now I've showed you like why we've done new bodies before, just because it allows us to to 3D print things separately, but I'm going to use this for a different reason this time. So now the reason is, is that I can go in and we can create these sketches. And down here is why I, I care a little bit more. So we're going to change. I showed you that visual style before. I'm going to go back to with hidden edges so I can see where my, uh, where those those other fins that I created were, even though we're not going to use them now, if we make changes, it could come in handy. So I'm going to make these lines coincident. So select a line there. And actually we need to, we're going to make that line more inset. But the reason why I created this as a new body is because now that we did this sketch, we're going to go in and select these profiles here. And now when we do a cut, rather than see how it's cutting through this portion of the pump that we created before, we don't want that. We are going to just click this drop down of bodies to, or objects to cut, and we're going to deselect the pump. So you see how it leaves it now? Select toggle it off and on. So now we can do things only to the pieces that we want rather than just everything. It's pretty handy. It comes in in to play in a lot of places. So now we have something that looks more like what we're after, right? Close enough. So if we want now, we can use that combine tool again, select that and select this piece. And now that's all one object again. I'm going to change my visual style back just to get my lines back to normal. We're going to make this look a little bit more like a cylinder. We're going to add some radius to those inside edges. I mean, we could go, well, let's not go all the way in there. We'll go 1.5. That. Now let's do those outside. One's fine. So now it's got a little bit more of a rounded appearance, something similar enough. Now we don't have a, a finned head on this and we're gonna leave that out for now. If you wanted to add it, you could easily do that. 1.5 there. We can hit, oh, let's just do, that's fine for now.
radius these outsides. One. Pretty simple. Just again, this thing's a basic, basic model of what we're after. Now, if we wanted, you can see this thing has a handle on it. That's That's one of those things, like if I was going to do this for myself, I'd probably want to like bend that out of some, some wire or even some like brass wire, uh, not, not copper wire, but, uh, like some brass wire, you get the hobby shop, you could bend that around really simply and it would probably look much better. You could paint it, but if you have a 3d printer handy and you don't have any of that type of thing, maybe you want, maybe you want this to be 3d printed. So let's do. Let's do something simple for that. Let's let's do it with the multi-body way again because maybe that was a little bit hard to to grasp. So we're gonna create something. Let's take this and let's do go this way. So we created this handle. Let's make these things perpendicular. Make sure everything's square there. Let's make the thickness of this handle 2.5 millimeters. Let's make sure this matches. Actually, let's go to three. So eight millimeters is fine for that length of it, 25. We said a three millimeter there. So let's put a radius on this of, uh, of three and then do a radius on the bottom of six. That's going to allow us to actually do some radius around this to make this look round if we wanted, or we could leave it square. But so finish that. We're going to go to extrude. We're going to make this symmetric. Make sure that it's, we're going to go new body again. And we can again explain why we need to do this. But so that's too wide. Let's go. Let's go eight. Reasonable. Now, this looks bad. That's not what I would want. But say, let's first do a radius on these corners to bring it in, make it look like a handle. Four, sure. Now let's create a sketch on this, this plane here, just because that's going to be the, the one that is the most difficult. I'm going to hit P for project so I can get this outside shape. Hit OK. Then we're going to go in and hit offset and we're going to select all those and go three millimeters. It brings it inside. Now I'm going to click line and I'm just going to make those lines extend further just so that I have plenty of length on what I need. Now what I can do since we've done that is we're going to select those areas. We're going to cut them. So now if I went and I just drug this all the way through, you can see how it cuts everything, which is not at all what we want. But again, we've got this drop down. We select that and we just deselect the items we don't want it to cut. So we don't want it to cut the main body. As you can see, that one there, if it's selected, it cuts it. And then this one here is the, comp the pump area, the actual compressor. So we leave that cut and we only want it to cut this handle. Hit OK. And now you have your own handle. 
Fusion doesn't have a pipe tool. It, you can do, you could do an extruded path along, uh, but again, if you're trying to 3D print something round like that, then it's a little bit more difficult because you don't end up with a lot on the bed. This is, I'm trying to optimize this for 3D printing, not for the actual scale way of making a pipe handle. This is to be able to 3D print easily a scale item. That's why, that's why I'm doing this like it is, not trying to replicate a model of this as close as possible. Cause then I would, I could go through and just try and draw this and try and make it as perfect as I could. But this is specifically for 3D printing. That is why I'm going about things this way. And so that that's why, like, just so there's, there's no confusion. We could draw this in a, in a more accurate to the, I'm going to make this a little bit longer just so, oops. Oh, I had a constraint there. Let's see. Um, so now we've created that. One thing we have done now is we've got this, this interference. Technically we wouldn't be able to connect these things. So if we want to do that, I can create a sketch based on that. Hit P for project. We can turn off the main body and we can click all of those lines. Hit OK. I'm going to turn that body back on. And now we're going to cut based on that profile. Again, we're going to deselect the handle because we don't want to cut the handle. We want to cut the main body. So now if we turn off the handle, you can see we've got this little recess where those 3D printed handle areas will be able to drop right in. Now let's one thing with that is what I should have done is given this a little bit of an offset just so that it had some room. Let's give it a 0.25 millimeter offset it gives us a half a millimeter all the way around and do that on both sides. Then you'll be able to comfortably sit that in there. One thing after doing that, we need to make sure and go and select those areas. So there, now you can see there's a little bit of wiggle room. Be able to 3D print that, put it in there, glue it in. So. Simple version of an air compressor. Let's put our text on it, just because we've been doing that. I'm gonna select that mid plane. Go create text. Text is HD. HD, I like the impact font. Okay. We're gonna make that a little bit larger. Text is always a little funny. Angle, oh. So we've got that text selected. Now instead of uh, the start as the profile, we can go offset from object, select that, and then we'll just go a distance of, let's just say 0.2. 
So there, now it brought our text out to the end and just projected it. It's only gonna be on one side, it's not on both sides, but I think that's good enough. So that's gonna do it for a very simple air compressor on here. We'll get into, let's get into the comments for just a minute. Again, oh, one thing I didn't do, well, with this right now, again, so this total thing is these wheels are separate parts. So you got two pieces there. The center body is a part. There's a third, the handle's a fourth, and this top portion is a fifth. Five total parts to 3D print this if you'd like. One thing you can do, I believe you can use the letter A for appearance. And now we could go in and select like this center portion. And let's see, unassign and delete. Um, I'm gonna do So you can assign materials to things to kind of show you how things will look a little bit better. Gives you, gives you an idea. And let's just grab something else for that. But now, there you go. You can colorize your, your models. Maybe it'll allow you to look at things a little bit differently. You can tell when parts are different. Something to see. One more thing that Fusion has. So powerful of a program for how, for free. Like the fact that it's free is mind blowing. If you guys 3D print these and tag me on Instagram in the, uh, in the photos, I'll reshare them just because I think that's that's cool when you guys actually 3D print them. Okay, cool. Done. Let's do the next thing. Trash can. I want a desktop trash can to, to have in conjunction with my dumpster. Right? <laughs> this is this will be super simple in comparison though. So let's uh let's open this back up and trash can orange orange trash can images what do we have for orange trash cans i want an orange trash can ooh that one's a little bit more a little more intricate home depot i like it that's a good looking trash can let's do let's do that See, it's gonna be a little bit interesting, you see, with these like recessed areas and all that, but we can do it. Let's, uh, first of all, let's decide how tall we want this thing. What do we want it for? Let's have it for holding something. Not holding pens and X-Acto knives. So if it's gonna hold that, let's make this thing like uh, 80 millimeters tall which is uh, about three and a quarter, right? Sound good? Glad you all agree. So, we're gonna go on the face. Now, if I'm gonna 3D print this without trying to overhang like the handles, I would want to 3D print it upside down, actually, on the top. I'm not going to draw that way, but I'm just going to think about that initially when I'm drawing to make sure that I make some decisions based on it. So we're going to draw from our origin, which is that center dot. It's always, I like to base things around my origin. That way, I, it, it just makes a lot of things easier. So we're going to draw like that. Now I said I want this to be a total of 80 millimeters, right? Now, if I have an 80 millimeter tall trash can, how big in diameter do I want it? Actually. Let's grab my, my custom dumpster made by, pardon my new, 
this thing to the front side is about 100 millimeters tall. So 80, yeah, I think 80 is good. Let's do like a, uh, do like a 55 millimeter diameter at the top. Maybe that's too much, but. So this needs to be 55 divided by two. And as far as the draft, let's go 20. Josh is unintentionally designing people scale garages. I know. Like, I'm, I'm trying not to make super specific things like this for this truck only, which applies to nobody. So basically, I'm just going through and designing. The whole point is just to show like, hey, take a look at an item and break it down into more simple shapes so that you can 3D model it. Not as much trying to, you know, make all these things the most usable. I'm just trying to make, pick an item and draw it. And if in the end, you people end up with scale garages, it is my fault. So that looks like too much draft compared to that one. So we're gonna go uh, 22.5, makes it a little bit better looking. Now another thing, looking at it, of course we have like this lip around the top that's more pronounced. So let's add that. Let's make it, yeah, let's make it four millimeters. That's fine. Uh, actually it's too much. Three millimeters, three millimeters out, four millimeters tall. Okay. So we're going to start with this and then I'm going to make this solid to start and then we're going to shell it at the end it's called. So we started there. Profiles, we're going to select all of that. Axis, we're going to go that vertical. Then we end up with this cylinder to start with. Now from here, we're going to be able to add all of our details. So we've got a couple of things to look at how we're going to do this. So let's do this in, we're going to do it in a kind of a simple way. We're going to create another sketch from the, from the front there. This goes up. It's got a little bit of a, a little of a hump to it, but up create an arc at the top three point line x for construction we're going to make sure that these lines are all horizontal so that everything is in the center. I don't think this thing's got enough diameter to it for the height, does it? Let's make it, let's go 30, maybe more, 35 and That's too much, huh? Let's stay at 30 at the bottom, 32. I think that'll look better once we start adding all the detail. Forty. Fifty four is fine there. Now let's that there. Let's do 
five. Let's make that three. Now I drew this sketch in the center there. So we're going to do this kind of like what we did on the um, text on the side of that compressor. So we drawn that now we're not going to cut all the way through we're going to again we're going to go from profile and offset select the outside and then we're going to go let's try and get a look at this select oh select object outside and then the distance, we're just going to go two millimeters. I don't know. There we go. It keeps losing the out. So now we're just cutting two millimeters on the outside. See? Oh, it didn't go all the way to the bottom. We screwed something up there. Oh, yeah, I didn't take that, that line all the way to the bottom. We're just going to take it past. Two objects to cut. Oh, I think I actually I went past and I don't think it likes it when you do that. So there we go. gives us that. Let's see if I can mirror that feature if it sometimes it doesn't love to mirror certain features. That mirror plane. Yep, did it just fine. So we created that cut to resemble that that area there. Now we have the same kind of a similar thing to do on the other side, but underneath the handles. So let's knock one of those out quick. This one, we're just going to do a very simple rectangle. We're going to make sure that the bottom of that rectangle is centered on the origin. Now this is going to basically dictate the width of our handles. So I'm going to have our handles be about 20 millimeters. So maybe our handles will be just a little less to the inside then. And we need to call out a height. 52 again is fine. So from object, selecting the object as the face, the distance as two millimeters, but needs to be a cut. And then we actually, that should then be a negative two millimeters. Created that mirror again feature, select that, select the mirror plane that's in the midpoint. It's creating basically what we want. Now we just need to add some handles and be on our way. So we created that at 20 millimeters wide. I'm going to create or grab the, the sketch plane that sits parallel to what the handles, how they would come out of the body. So we're going to construct that. We need to offset that by 
10 millimeters. So that'll make that plane basically right along that edge. Create a sketch on that plane. Now let's look at that photo. It comes out from the lip, goes down, we've got kind of a triangle shape. So let's We're going to want to make sure that uh, it's not doesn't love to snap on points like that sometimes. But eighteen millimeters down. I'll go ahead and put the radius on this now just for visualize better. Four millimeters is, is fine. We'll go with that. Just make sure that everything intersects like we want it to. It's overlapping as needed. So now to try and save us some time later, we're going to hit L for line again. X construction. Going to hit mirror. Select objects. Selected all of those by dragging over, mirroring across. Now we're going to select those two profiles. Change that to join. We'll make it uh, make it three millimeters wide on each side. And now let's mirror that feature. So I mirrored it based on that midpoint again, and now we end up with something pretty reasonable. Let's create some sketches. We're going to go based on those radius points. These are that was a four millimeter radius, so that makes this a pretty substantial, you know, handle as far as that. Is it gonna? It's not showing me that midpoint that I want. It's okay. We'll just select them both. So we've got those selected. Whoops. So we've created the handle area. Now let's throw all of our radius stuff in here to clean this thing up. Because being that it's a molded trash can in reality, all these things would be very rounded and flowing corners. Two point five millimeter. Okay. Then we're gonna do an inside and outside of all of these. Uh, something it's not liking something so just do these one at a time see what it doesn't like it's 
Not liking that face at all. Hmm. We'll come back and investigate that. Let's first do a shell feature. So there's this, this item up here and click shell. Now, if you click, click that top and do inside thickness of three millimeters. So when you click the top, it should negate that face, I believe, and everything else. Give this thing a second to think. What happens if we do a two millimeter? It's not loving, not loving the shell function. Let's remove all of the handle stuff. So it doesn't have to look at that and then do it. It likes that better. So now it's got something that looks more reasonable. Then we can drag back the handles. They interfere a little bit with the inside. We can clean that up. We can clean that up without too much worry though. Now, let's see if it'll, yeah. So these inside corners are a little ugly, but we can select those. By throwing some radiuses on those, it'll make these easier to 3D print as well. There's less sharp corners everywhere. So. So as you do that, you can see it kind of just, it rounds all these corners into themselves. This corner, see it when that, if you would have tried to 3D print that, it was like these back cuts. And those are just, you're gonna see a lot of, lot more movement out of your printer than needed. So if you can take care of those ahead of time, you'll smooth out your 3D print. End up with less noise in the print with like the little vibrating lines try and smooth all of those down. Let's see if we can. Nope, doesn't like that one. So we'll look one more time back at the handles. That's that portion. Nah. I was hoping that it would let me deselect that area, but not so much. So I'll just have to do a cut to get rid of those or a revolved cut. Change our visual styles to hidden edges again. Then well, actually we can just do a uh, do an inspect to get our radius up top. 
which is 20, no, kind of a funky radius. I'll clean that up in a minute. We'll, we'll ignore that. That's just one of those ugly things that is easy to, to clean up, but, or annoying to clean up, but not that big of a hassle. So, Let's throw, let's throw text on this one too, and call it, call it a winner, call it done. That make it 15 millimeters tall. There we go. Distance 0.5. Cut, join. All right. Um, you should print this print this is trash can on site. If I'm going to print this, I would actually, so I would print it on upside down. So the lid down and then print up from there, because I think most things are going to be able to, to, to clean up. I'm probably going to go through right before I upload this. So this handle area, for example, let me, That part I'm fine with. It was the I want to right. I decided to take this all the way out. Instead, I want to bring it back in a little bit. So that brought it, oh, it's weird. It didn't mirror it properly. Hmm. I don't know why those two sides didn't stay in relation. But that keeps those under the brim so there's no hang over there that way when you're printing this it shouldn't need any support it should you know these technically should probably use a little bit of support um and uh, talking about printing it with ne nearly all support material inside i don't know that you're going to need it i think that i could print this upside down without any support material in here just because it's a constant draft and then as far as that the bottom of this goes I mean, most 3D printers, I think, are going to be able to bridge that gap without much of an issue. I know mine can. Um, you know, you might have a little bit of a sag, but it's going to be on the inside and really not that big of a deal. Like, I wouldn't print this with support material. Uh, I'll probably go through and clean up this radius here. I'll definitely come in and, and fix it. Let's see. That. I'm going to just bring that up to that surface. So now I've got just a, a nice flat surface there for it to start on. And I don't think that there's going to be any issue. Can I do this? If I select that and we do direction profile, trying to think if it will let me select. Oh, I know what I might be able to do. I can probably do a sweep we select that for the profile we select this line for the path chain is a cut it's 
It's not perfect, but gets rid of it. It's not, it's not the best, but in an STL, that's probably not even going to show up. So a couple of other little things we can do to, to clean things up. Like I said, in here, I should probably just revolve cut to get rid of these, these little nubs, make it fairly simple. And let's see. I know on SolidWorks, I can do remove faces and it, I can just get rid of things like that without a problem. It's super easy, but some of the differences between the two programs that I'm not always a hundred percent positive on. Like I said, I don't use, I don't use Fusion 360 all that often. It's just, it's similar enough to the other ones that I use that it doesn't, So let's do will this. Will these sides do a one? Yeah. We had a one millimeter radius to those that clean up pretty good. Um, this one is not reacting the same. So okay, I'm going to go through and, and clean this up a little bit right before I send it to the send it to Thingiverse, but it's going to be our our finished model enough for what we're doing here. Again, if you guys print these, just tag me on Instagram. It's always fun to see them. I'll probably have this uploaded here in the next 30 minutes or so. So anyway, that's the, uh, the purpose of what we got done tonight. Hopefully some of you guys enjoyed it. I like doing these, so I'll probably try and continue to do these on Sundays just for fun. If you guys have any suggestions of things you'd specifically like to see, Drop them in the uh, comments of the video, in the chat here. I'll try and read through as much of it as I can. But as always, guys, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Tuesday for the Scale News Update. I've got bomber videos coming this week. We've got other projects coming live with Matt on Wednesday. Hopefully we have a guest on Wednesday as well. And uh, Friday night, we've got another kit build. So appreciate it, guys. Thanks for stopping in. And uh, yeah, that's all we got for now. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time.